right. Okay, the interview started. <laughs> what? Yep. <laughs> Not only. You have to start again. <laughs> I'm Did just stop it? hanging out with my girlfriend Stephanie here today. And um, she was actually just recently stung by a bark scorpion here uh, down in Baja. And um, I remember, like, looking online and trying to find out what it was like to actually be stung by a bark scorpion uh, quite a bit before <laughs> it actually happened uh, to her. And I couldn't find, like, a lot of information. Like, there's a lot of stuff written, but there wasn't a lot of people on YouTube just, like, talking about what it's like, like, what the actual experience of getting stung by a bark scorpion was. And so... Um, Stephanie's <laughs> going to tell you guys what it's like to actually be stung by a bark scorpion. So she was like, it was like nighttime. They come out, of course, to prowl around at night. Yeah. And uh, they don't run away. Um, not like spiders. They don't try to, you know, run and hide when you come nearby. They hold still. And that's kind of the problem with bark scorpions because they're super easy to step on yeah. uh, when you hold still. And they're pretty hard to see. And they seem to come out when it gets hotter, mm -hmm. and it hadn't been as warm um, for a few weeks, I guess, well, a little while. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten a little bit um, careless, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. a Not careless, but comfortable. Yeah, that would yeah. be a better word for it. Um, and so, yeah, I wasn't wearing shoes mm -hmm. in the house, mm -hmm. which for the first while when we were feeling a bit more um, aware mm -hmm. <laughs> of the threat, um, we were a lot more cautious about actually using the black lights mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to the sort of check rooms the black because lights, that really uh, makes them glow even from yeah. a really far distance. So that was actually quite a helpful thing. Black lights are pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, when we first got here, it was a lot more of using the black lights um, and shoes and that kind of thing and being a lot more conscious. And uh, uh, You were standing on the foot because yeah. you stepped on one. Yeah. Yeah. Which is apparently one of the better places to get stung, <laughs> from uh, what we hear. Um, I think the blood flows m uh, more slowly as part of it. Um, anyway, because of all the well, stuff we've written... Why don't we start with this? What do you do when you get stung well, by a box? I was just going to say okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> Good you. job, baby. You beat me to it. Um, yeah, so I suppose some of what we had read may be stuck in the back of my mind because I don't remember actually being aware of the information. Um, but the first thing I did right away after I got stung on the foot, first I thought I actually stepped maybe on a piece of glass um, because I was barefoot in the kitchen and Aaron had recently broken something um, that was glass. So I wasn't sure. It kind of fit. That's sort of what it felt like. Um, I'd heard it was a bit more like a bee sting, but it definitely felt more like I'd stepped on like a piece of glass. So I lifted up my foot, obviously, and was like, ow, and then some profanities poured out. <laughs> Um, and then I looked back and I was like, I think I've been stung and we couldn't see it um, for a couple minutes because uh, our floor is sort of sand colored tiles and they're a bit of a sandy color and um, they really, like Aaron said, they stay really still so it was really hard to even identify it right away. Um, so I ran to the bathroom and I washed my foot with some uh, soapy water. Um, and then put this frozen is, so corn what you on it. Do, yeah, what and you that's actually what you do want to do. When you get stung wash it right away. by a bark scorpion. Yes, yeah, wash it right away with soapy water. Yeah, and uh, then put a cold calm, compress. Stay calm, of course, so the blood doesn't circulate quickly. Um, that keeps the pores, and of course, more, lo more localized to where it was. And then, uh, like, ice it. Like, seriously ice it. Yeah. Because, um, of course, that just, like, helps to immobilize the flow of blood and also the poison into the rest of your system and then it's good to have some Benadryl on mm -hmm. hand because that's sort of an antihistamine and it helps with any sort of like allergic possible allergic response and inflammation yeah and um, I definitely think that made a big difference yeah. and we put um Aaron made my foot an ice bath and I had it in there off and on as much as I could stand which was mostly in the water because it felt almost better than it was feeling otherwise. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, what was it for like about three hours. What was it like to get stung? What was the pain like? The first uh, initial pain like? Like I said, when I first stepped on it, it felt like I stepped on glass. Yeah, like glass. That's how, how I would it. How would you rate the scale it. on pain on one to ten? <laughs> um, I don't know, six maybe six? initially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did it go up from there? Did it go down from there? It was pretty painful. Yeah. Um. Because you were having like. Well, spasms. and then, yeah, after like about 20 minutes, spasms. it felted, yeah, exactly, sort of like that, like convulsive pain, I guess would be the way that I would put it. 
Um, luckily for myself, it didn't move too far. I had a few that sort of shot up my leg, quite a bit in my ankle and around the tops of my toes, um, as well as the bottom of my foot. And then I realized I, I got fairly tired and I tried to just sleep. We took, I took some Tylenol mm -hmm. and Benadryl. Aspirin and uh, Ibuprofen and, that and, definitely and Benadryl helped. are apparently the yeah, ibuprofen. Correct, correct cocktail. Ibuprofen. Uh, yeah, Ibuprofen and, and Benadryl. Benadryl yeah. um, so that helped and then I slept and I remember when I woke up it was still very painful. I took some more um, your foot of the same. Your fallen asleep too, right? Yeah, and at yeah. that point I was more aware of, um, I guess, what would be the paralysis factor and essentially my whole foot was really asleep, which I don't think I totally realized until some of those nerves kind of started coming back online and it was quite painful. So it was like really shooting, stabbing pains and it felt like, you know, if you sit on like your foot for way too long or something and you go to stand up and you just kind of buckle because it's like that pins and needles, but it's more intense than just a bit of the pins and needles. It's like it hurts. And you're pretty much off your feet for probably a good Almost it was three days. Yeah, yeah. three days. And three I days slept. Pretty strong, but on the third day you're hot, kind of hobbling along there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you slept a lot. And I slept really a lot. Yeah. Like I think I and slept like. And the pain like was like kind of like a five or six on yeah. painkillers. Yeah. So if you weren't on painkillers, it probably would have been, been a lot more. Quite a bit more. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then. But you didn't have any reactions. Which is no, good. I didn't have any other reactions other than uh, what we just described. Apparently so when you're stung in the foot, that's good. Um, you're not likely to need to go to the hospital or anything like that. If you're stung somewhere else, um, not too sure. Uh, but uh, yeah. I think probably the majority of stings are on the foot because, like I say, they just hold still and they're so easy to step on. Yeah. Um, and uh, like you said, I had no additional allergic reaction so mm -hmm. that's the one thing you need it's to be yeah. uh, worried about if your throat starts like closing or if you feel like you can't so. breathe yeah yeah i think around 20 to yeah, 40 like minutes 45 is when that mi really starts if after 45 minutes you haven't had like an allergic response you're probably in the clear yeah so that's it that's a good thing to know yeah and then i mean really it was just kind of managing the symptoms because there wasn't really anything else that could be done about it at that point um, so like Aaron said, it was sort of just repeating, taking ibuprofen and Benadryl. I did that pretty solidly for a couple days. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, for myself, I don't know, my body just sort of shut down. I felt a little dizzy. I did have a little bit of blurry vision, but I wear glasses and my vision <laughs> sucks at the best of times. But then she put her glasses back so on and it was fine. It's hard to it's say if any that. of that had anything to do with the, the actual sting or not. I don't know. But I did sleep like I was in a semi-coma for anyway. about three days. We're going to show you a little video of the bark <laughs> scorpion now, and I'll help you identify how to pick out the bark scorpion, the difference between the bark scorpion and, uh, and like a striped tail scorpion. They look almost the same. And that's it. Hope you guys like this video. Follow me for and more. And I'm alive. It's and all she's good. alive, so Yay. could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> so that one there is the bark scorpion. And you can tell it's a bark scorpion because of how long and... Um, and a needle like his claws are. The other t uh, striped tail scorpions have like kind of a crab-like claw. The uh, bark scorpion uh, also likes to walk with his tail kind of down, kind of down and long. Right now I think he's a little agitated so it's a little bit curled up but if you see them walking that's also how you can identify which one are the striped tail and which one are the uh, bark scorpions. They're good climbers, but they're not good on smooth surfaces. They've got um, kind of like little rock climbing hooks for for legs, so they can climb up anything with a bit of a a groove, I guess, a bit of a surface. But if it's uh, entirely smooth, then they don't have much luck because they don't seem to have like any sort of stickiness on their feet. So 